Most people in America are wondering, what is a pagan, right? I mean, they spend their whole day thinking about their faith, their God, their spirituality, and how the Holy Ghost works around them, right? I don't think so. I'm not really seeing that. What I'm seeing is a lot of companies or a lot of organizations purchasing old churches. We see that in small towns when we drive across kind of state lines and we see that there is a building that's now a house that most likely because of its architecture was a church at one time or a school at one time. The truth is that is happening on college campuses too that apartment complexes are being put in portions of old churches compounds. So we have to look at those churches and wonder what the pastors are doing. How are they producing their living and what are they saying to their national organizations about their constituents or their parishioners or their people in terms of their numbers? I also know that there's a couple churches on campuses that are producing food for people who are living in poverty and students who are claiming that they need this, the food assistance or because they have food insecurities. As a pagan, I am of course concerned with this. The International Pagan Federation is honestly the best place for any person to learn about paganism. I am not a resource for that, even though that I claim my religion underneath the Bill of Rights, First Amendment, which allows me the right and to freedom of religion and freedom of assembly, to be pagan. Many people in Christendom and the various denominations of that abuse the word pagan. They make the word pagan as if they're a Satanist person or an atheist or someone who's immoral. What we know from the house of the Lord and the good works like the Bible, the Quran, the, and other things that other people have inspired themselves to write on their version of God is that claiming someone is immoral is sort of, well, immoral. What we know is that God knows what he makes. So on this rock, we can put our faith. What that means is that God has made every human being and every animal of the planet, or planet system. God forbid we find out there's really something out there like aliens and then we're gonna be totally crushed as American citizens because we're just not the hottest shit out there. But what I'm talking about is not to be silly or funny or ridiculous. What I'm talking about is that we don't know what's out there. And we have a wonderful woman who did a program long ago for Team in Focus who was, she was a super leader in that, in that multi-level marketing business which really did help some people and didn't help some people, but it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is Melanie Rebel wrote this line or used this line from someone else, but I heard it from her that said, you don't know what you don't know. And as a trained journalist degreed from a top 10 university, who's always been an interested person in hearing stories, probably because my father was a pretty good storyteller, and he always used to do Horace the Pet Mountain Lion for us, which was a great funny story where Horace basically burped out the family members after he ate them all, and that's okay. And he was also warning us about mountain lions that do still live in Illinois today. But the reality is, at least I've been told, and I've seen possibly a few of them, but I don't want to tell you that because you might be scared of them. But that's not the point of getting off track and being a little silly this early morning in the city. What I can tell you is that the faith of America is at risk. The faith of America is always at risk when we allow people and types, different types of people from societies that have no version of faith into our country. Right now, there's some sort of K-pop or something group running around America who are Korean and don't speak English, I believe. Or maybe some of the members do. And some of them interpret for the others. But my attitude is, they've been here for almost a year, thanks to Ellen. Get them the fuck back home to their country. They're not that special. We have American groups just like that. We have beautiful black uh, dancing troops like that. We have all sorts of African groups like that. We have our own Japanese, our own Chinese, our own Korean groups like that. We do not need to import entertainment like that. No offense, it's just my feeling. At the same time, we have a risk to our nation with 1.5 million foreign students, many of whom come from godless worlds. And godless worlds produce immorality to most of us who are old school about not morality, but God. The regulation of morality and the education of propriety is something that the Queen of England is prolific at. My understanding from listening very carefully is that in their educational programs abroad, even though I do not agree with the concept of uniforms too often, except for the fact that it helps to not distinguish the haves versus the have-nots 
in communities and cities, which I like it for and then don't like it for because it squelches the expression of children of all types and all races and nations and whatnot and peoples, but it does create about a solidarity and a unity of teamness within groups. Now, having run that gamut, I'm saying the point is that in England and other places that we have originally come from, they still have kind of a moral code of ethics type of class. And openly, while we have these world citizenship programs in elementary schools and junior high schools, it doesn't always last. What I do firmly believe, and I have written a slide on it unless it's been stolen off my computer like my thumb drives were from the sheriff in Indianapolis where I stole 24 of my thumb drives as I left a particular situation that I did not enjoy but I submitted myself to because it was the decision of the court that openly we have the right to our abilities, 